What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Twink Revolution. I'm Sam. I'm Gian. And um, I'm happy to announce that, uh, you know, after 34 years of, of bitter struggle, um, we now know the answer to who killed beloved Swedish Prime Minister Olaf Palme. It was, um, it was Sam, as it yeah. turned out. And Why did you do it? Um, I just felt like it. He, for, the, for the sexual thrill, you deviant. I was jealous. He got to smoke cigars with Fidel and like <laughs> Tito, and I never got to. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the announcement was fun. I must, I must say that was like, it, maybe my bar has been lowered by Corona sort of quarantine life, but um, that was kind of one of the more exciting things I've seen in a while. The press conference? Yeah. yeah. No, the press conference. Swedish people are bad at press conferences. It was uh, like you were watching it in translation, my friend. You had the closed loop translation on. Oh. In the original Swedish, it's, uh, it was it was dynamic. It was beautiful. Was it actually? No. Oh, it was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking government press conference <laughs> about a murder investigation that implicated something like forty thousand different suspects that eliminated them all, and then basically told everyone like that it was it was like the guy everyone suspected it was. And he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, sounds suspicious. I don't buy it. Um, yeah, yeah, no, they, they yeah. I, I, think I, it know, was, I, I, I think enjoy, I enjoyed it. I say it was more, more excitement than I've had in a while. I think it was Uzbekistan's prime minister. I liked the uh, just, I like, South know. Africa, the uh, South African apartheid government uh, to you know take him out. That was always a fun theory. I buy that. Yeah, I mean, we just choose to believe it was you though, because honestly, that's just as fun. Well, how do you know I'm not Afrikaans or Afrikaner? Could be. Um, or like the, that's not an accent you can hide honestly oh yeah what if i was like second gen so like i didn't inherit oh, it if, well then you're i don't know i mean um <laughs> that's that's true there's you you got me there or i'm uh, like am i six when i was like <laughs> negative 20 years old or something <laughs> yeah i don't know i can't do math like no, that I, I can tell um <laughs> Uh, no, I, I know it's, it's, it's funny that the like small excitements that, that really rock my world now that wouldn't have crossed my attention threshold once upon a time. I went to the dentist. It's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. My teeth were very clean. It's a, I don't know, like this was, this was like the most sort of engaging social contact I'd had in several months was, uh, hanging out, hanging out in the dentist office. We're finally receiving the masses of, um, British labor twinks. Um, because of all of our quizzes on our new <laughs> Twink website. Oh yeah, I don't know if people will know about that. Uh, so um, we uh yeah, so the, the website is there, twinkrev.com. Get get it while it's hot. Um, but we uh, I, what was it like Sunday night or something? We were sitting around and and I was just chuckling about the idea of doing like a shitty BuzzFeed style quiz. <laughs> um, but the the joke was um. So there's like, it's pretty common to find these like stupid BuzzFeed, like which, you know, um, which revolutionary hero are you? And then there's also like the sexy ones on, on queer to you. What are they sort of like gay, yeah. gay bait news, so like gay news sites. We'll do these like, are you a top or a bottom quiz? We can tell. Um, and so we just mashed it up. The idea was just like, just do both of them. And um, <laughs> that was the joke. That's the joke. But it turns out there's hordes of, um, Attract, attractive left leftist twinks are now taking the quiz and it, sharing it. They didn't right? come for the podcast. They came for the hot BuzzFeed style quiz <laughs> to figure out if they're a Lennon bottom or a Fidel top or like yeah. a Thomas Sankara verse. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, and we, and we, we have the, the software to tell them. Um, yeah. We are uh, both Lennon tops. We took the yeah, quiz. Yeah. Apparently that's, that's science. You can't, can't argue with that. I was disappointed. I was hoping to be a Fidel verse. But mm. we can't have what we want in the world, I guess. Hey, yeah, no, I mean, the the, the quiz has spoken. <laughs> I'm going to change the quiz so I get what I want. <laughs> uh, I want it. I got it. <laughs> um, what else has been going on, Gian, this week? Uh, the Supreme Court, um, the bastion of, of liberal democracy that uh, embodies just the highest highest embodiment of our principles yeah. and our values, has uh, said that, um, that the, the faggots are allowed to work or something. Yeah. Is that what it was? I've not really paying attention. Yeah, they made it so sex and the anti discrimination federal policies included sexual um minorities and gender minorities. So like it's trans people and gay people and That's exciting. What else? Um, um this is, so the ruling was basically this had been a challenge 
about whether the sort of protected class designation applied under the Civil Rights Act, right, to 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 the gays yeah. and to trans people. It was if um, and they do the term sa- sex in the language of the anti discrimination policy would incorporate um lgbt people and they ruled it did oh sex um, yes please <laughs> i think it's really funny because the person who wrote the yes majority was uh, gorsuch gorsuch yeah. who yeah. was appointed by trump um oh my god everyone's trump just said gay right kind of ignoring that part because like i think the whole narrative is like trump's just gonna keep appointing a bunch of people who are gonna like you know get rid of gay marriage and ban all the abortions and stuff. And I don't know, it hasn't ha- happened yet. Um, and I think actually there was another Supreme court policy that was really f- not funny, but funny in the leftist perspective is the pipeline in South Dakota. I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg supported and I'm like, oh, good old lefty RBG, you know, <laughs> um, Yes, the um. So yeah, I, I saw people sort of losing their minds or trying to not quite losing their minds. People were happy about this decision, um, you know, rightly so. Good. It's, it's an enshrinement of a certain uh, number of legal protections about not being fired from your job for for being a homo or something. Um, but then the 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 sort of expert criminologists and the the Russia Gate conspiracy havers um, definitely started weighing in about what does this mean. Trump, this is a repudiation of Trump and actually a uh, Neil Gorsuch, welcome to the revolution. Welcome, welcome to the resistance. <laughs> um, and, and as though like any of these people give a shit cause they don't, it's, no. it's like, it's, um, to understand the, the, the Supreme court as, as anything except sort of a, um, an institution for protecting the interests of capital and and straightforwardly right like capital doesn't give a shit about most of these rights anymore yeah it's just that they just it doesn't like it, they do not care about trans issues they don't care about uh lgbt issues more broadly for the most part there are there are like weird companies like hobby lobby or whatever are owned by religious fundamentalists who are very animated by the stuff but for the most part um yeah you know google pulled out of north carolina over their bathroom bills and stuff like that and like it, it just they don't give a shit it doesn't matter mm-hmm well, it's the trapped mindset that we're still in, like, the Bush era or the Reagan era kind of, like, conservatism um, versus a Trump where, I don't know, he actually had, like, plenty of minorities and gay people and, like, I don't know. Twink, he, twinks for Trump was a thing. He waved the rainbow flag and that's not me saying he's good. Like, he's bad, but that's because <laughs> I don't violent of virtue signaling around identity as a way to choose who's good and bad in like the discourse like i think it's you can be a have awful politics and be pro-gay and like pro-black and pro-woman and like that doesn't really matter because it could be like oh well, is it everyone or just the ones who have money and like capital like right. which is the same thing democrats believe in but <laughs> in a way that's like more obtuse and like hidden well, he, he famously said um, that he was going to be the best, the best for uh, LGBT people or something. You know, our yeah, our beautiful, our beautiful folks, our beautiful LGBTs. Yeah, <laughs> um, they can have the best rights. Uh, so, so you know, um, it is not like we have learned nothing new about the political situation from this decision. It's merely it comes as certainly a relief to those who, um, for whom this would have been uh, probably pretty bad, right? I mean, work, worker protections. Um, I will. I will take them wherever I can get them. Totally. Um, and for whatever reasons, the fact that, yeah, the fact that it, it happens to come through as a, a Supreme court decision doesn't, yeah, doesn't tell us a lot about the structure of the society we live in, except that, um, gay rights are, or LGBT rights more broadly are, are, um, are largely acceptable to, uh, to, to capital these days. And they might change their minds again, or it might stop paying or whatever, but at the moment it pays. So okay, yeah. you get, you get some, some, some gay rights. Enjoy them while they last. Yeah, it's definitely an advancement, but I think it still is not a guarantee of a job or that you can just people or to people for other reasons, even if it could be for like, <laughs> cause we have to prove discrimination on like LGBT things. It's like, oh, they could just not offer you a job because they didn't want you. Right. Um, yeah. 
people, only only very dumb employers have not learned to game anti discrimination protections because yeah, well, like you can just, you can just fire people or not hire people for all sorts of dumb reasons, and that's all legal. I mean, it's all at will employment, for example, means that your contract can just be terminated without without a reason. They're not allowed to. So what the, what this protection has bought us is that an employer cannot say to you, Sam, you're fired for being a stupid homo. Yeah. Uh, they could just say, Sam, we're not renewing your contract. Yeah, I was actually reading. Sorry, no, I'm just saying, Sam, I'm not. We're not. Frank <laughs> Revolution is not um, unfortunately renewing your contract next year. What? Sorry to tell you, yeah. But I own half of Twink Rev. Oh, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> um, you can buy me out uh, for uh, another, like... Let's cut, let's cut the negotiations. <laughs> um, I, I need to get some Pinkertons in here to, uh, to to get your price down. Well, I think another example of this complexities of the LGBT issues from, like, you know, another bastion of liberalism, the European Union uh, member... Poland's president, I don't know how to say things. An, an, Andrzej, I think, or an, Ende. Andrzej. I, I was. I, I, Duda. I learned. I learned something about this DRZ construction. I think it's an Ende, Ende, or something. Anyway, yeah. Andrzej Duda. Andrzej Duda. I can say yeah. Duda. I don't know um, how to say it, but it's he. <laughs> Duda. Um, but he is part of like a right populist movement in the country, and, and he just stated. The LGBT agenda is worse than communism, which is actually pretty funny to see because I think for a while LGBT stuff was used as a tactic to target communist um, rhetoric um, based on like dumb liberal conceits. Um, but now it's like, oh, we'd rather have communism, which Poland has a deep anti communist establishment politic. Um, and they're like, oh, we'd rather have that than like all oh, you gays and like lesbians. Um, and actually have like anti-gay zones and they're trying to like get rid of education with like LGBT stuff and like the gay marriage. And it's like, I mean, they they didn't let Turkey in because of shit like this, like Poland and like other places. <laughs> well, I, I know. Yeah. I, 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 the problem is I, I read a, a, a statement like the LGBT agenda is worse than communism. And I'm like, yeah, true. Communism fucking good. LGBT agenda largely, you know, in uh within a sort of liberal rights framework boils down to um, protections from certain harms, but there's no, there's no positive project there about, yeah. I mean, what, it, what, what would it mean to actually eliminate the source of these harms? It would always be material. And that's the one thing you're not allowed to discuss. You can't talk about something like money or housing or, <laughs> and, you know, access to, to jobs that are not wage slavery and exploitation. So yeah, communism, Good. I think LGBT should, agenda, kind of, kind of weak, kind think, of weak sauce. I think he should prove his point and implement communism to show all of us <laughs> gays um, how bad we yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. come on, oh, dad. No. Come on, daddy Duda. Yeah. Show us how bad LGBTs are by implementing communism yeah, and giving no, us. Oh, don't do it. Oh no, we would hate that. <laughs> no. Um, oh, please don't. I'm surprised they haven't left the EU. Get on it. Oh, like, they, they get massive benefit from it. I mean, it's the right, like right populists across Europe since the, the like the Treaty of Rome and the sort of like the formulation of a, a more sort of monolithic or centralized EU. Mm -hmm. um, right populists have always like bleated about it as a, they, they will rail against it and then do nothing about it. Yeah, because it turns out like it's entirely compatible with their oh. their economic interests. So it's like being like the like fuck you dad politics, but then like, going back like. I hurt my knee, Daddy. Help yes. me. <laughs> yeah, no, it is exactly that. Um, That's the point. And and to the extent that like Britain, um, <laughs> you know, old uh, uh, David Cameron, you know, in in the UK, uh, sort of he had his bluff called because he was trying to pull this move. You know, he had, he didn't he didn't want this, but he was basically trying to silence elements of his own party that were sort of using this as as populist rhetoric. And then, uh, whoops, a daisy popular referendum Get it. passed and. Um, you know, fourteen thousand prime ministers later, or whatever they've had, and you know, they're uh, they're you know on their way out, um, having a having a hard a hard old time. I'm fine with the EU crumble, burn it down. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I don't really. I, that's that's the thing. To the extent <laughs> that it became the sort of darling project of of sort of Blairites and that that school of like um, you know, the sort of the the soft social Dems of continental Europe, and then like the Labour Party, um. They they do get rather starry eyed and moist about the many virtues of the EU, 
when really what it boils down to is like they they kind of love open markets. Yeah. They don't really give a shit about all this other like, you know, product safety labeling, standardization or um or indeed some of the some of the kind of, you know, vulgar vulgar identitarian uh human rights stuff that they'll do, which is perfectly good. Like uh they don't they don't, they don't give a shit about that. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, the, like, it's about the open markets and like the open labor border market. dream of that like like loving all the um, or taking care of all the like poor refugees, but instead it's like, oh, let's exploit the labor pools in the less developed regions and ship our goods over and destroy like captive markets and stuff that protect local communities. Yeah, tax havens too. I mean, it's a there's a wonderful um <laughs> bunch of tax arrangements that become possible through through EU taxation law around like um a lot of American tech companies will have these Irish subsidiaries that then you know, sell their services for like a loss to a Dutch subsidiary that can basically then get the money out to like um, some some Dutch colonies in the Netherlands and yada yada yada. It's like what a what a glorious uh, project and victory for humanity this is. Yeah. American corporations can sort of uh, manage to funnel funnel their their profits to uh, tax havens for uh, a very without really paying tax in many places at all or very much tax at all. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we've really we've won, folks. Yeah, uh, but then, yeah. um, going to LGBT issues that have actual stakes. God, are we still um, talking about the homos and communism? Turns out you can be communist and gay. No, but it being um, gay is worse than communism. Yeah, well, um, there was sad news this week of or quite a big story from Egypt a few years ago of this girl named Sarah Hegazi, who's a lesbian from Egypt. And also a kami, so that's pretty cool. Um, she went to a concert that ended up getting, I think it was up to 100 people imprisoned and tortured by um, the Egyptian military, militarized state um, after the Muslim Brotherhood was ousted, um, which actually technically was probably even less bad than like it is now. Cause it's been accelerating the last like, 20 years and like how much cracking down they are on gay people interesting um, so um yeah but they were only for, they were only in for a year as well like the muslim brotherhood it was very short period um but the new government which like was the military leader who took over uh, during the protest after the government elected by the arab spring was no longer liked like just severely cracking down and there was a concert of, um, remember the gay Lebanese guy that Mila talked about? The yeah. Sinner? He had a concert in Egypt and a bunch of gays and like allies and stuff in Egypt waved pride flags for the first time ever in Cairo at this concert. And let's just say the pictures got in the hands of the government and people like um, Sarah Higazi and um, kind of, and what's his name? Ahmad Alam. Um, as well as many others, were in prison for, like, I think three months. And wow. they, they, those two both separately escaped to Canada. And she sadly took her life after all the torture. And from what I've read is um, of quite a lack of support from fellow comrades and the LGBT community. Hmm. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. Um, um, I, uh, so, so, sorry, just to understand this. So... My my knowledge of Egyptian politics gets pretty murky. Yeah, uh, I gotta say, in terms of like the so post Arab Spring, um, so sorry pre Arab Spring, right? There was sort of a um a, a long time, uh, sort of like soft benevolent dictator, right? A very yes. friend of friend of the U.S. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name. Uh, but anyway, um, and and then there's sort of been a rapid succession of, you know, what you might call like political. F- factions sort of taking power and then losing power pretty quickly right some of whom we'd call maybe like broadly like secular liberal and then yeah the muslim brotherhood in there and then some mishmash of like yeah so um when the arab spring emerged they removed that like dictator u.s puppet state um and they had their first ever democratic elections like liberal democrat democratic elections um and the muslim brotherhood won and I think a year or two later, they were ousted for not satisfying the material needs. And then 
it was a military coup that removed the democratically elected leader and then it peak in power. But the funny thing is, um, the Muslim Brotherhood is kind of a fake opposition group. It actually emerged um, through Saudi and like Western support to combat communism in the region back when like communism and like secularism was kind of emerging and they actually were used to like confront the Nasser, like I'm not going to say communist, like the like more left friendly, like nationalist um, leader. Um, they've been around and they've been banned for one or banned in like a lot of like Eastern Europe, like Russia bans them as like a terrorist group. They were banned in Egypt for quite a while and then they were legalized. They took power and I think they're banned again. Um, oh, so you're not, you're not a fan. I'm not a fan of the Muslim oh. Brotherhood. Um, um, I, I will renounce my membership once. <laughs> um, well, apparently they have a lot of membership and, or like affiliate groups in like Britain. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 they, they are they're sort of widespread, and I imagine there's a lot of sort of mixed tendencies in there. Mm-hmm. Um, getting back to to Sarah H- Hegazi, um, yeah, sort of. I, I mean, it is always interesting to to think that there is a long. Um, there's a long, proud history in in North Africa, particularly, and and the Middle East of, um, you know, some some pretty impressive radicals in some sense, and yeah. particularly particularly you know communists and and sort of avowed socialists, who are um, putting up with a lot more than than Twitter shit fights and whatever we we kind of have to put up with. Yeah. Um, and and presumably you know these these, um, you know, adding the dimension of of LGBT oppression or whatever is uh yeah pretty pretty harsh <laughs> pretty 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 rough i can imagine <laughs> well i think it's kind of um the misinformation of like gay liberals in the west where they still think like oh i'm waving my pride flag to own like i don't know the deplorables and that's so radical compared to like i don't know what she did racing like one of the first pride flags at like a concert um and knowing there's like an increased crackdown on like LGBT people and still doing it. And I think um, the other guy that, that went to Canada um, when asked about it, it was like, Oh, I still think it was like one of the best moments. Like um, it, it's funny you say that because um, you, you know, it sounds like a you know, cool kind of gay, you know, really big gay concert in, in Egypt. But um, yeah, but I distinctly remember uh, in 2000, the, the turn of the millennium, the, uh, the the really shitty um, Jean Michel Jarre concert they put on in front of the pyramids and uh, <laughs> that was pretty fucking gay too so it's not the first time they've done something kind of gay and yeah Egypt, but um you wrote a you wrote an article about um, Tel Aviv Pride just in the, you know to yeah to shift read not to pretend I don't know these are not separate countries but they do share a border <laughs> so I and they share a common theme so I wrote an article on Tel Aviv Pride and why it sucks and why I don't like it. What's the title? Um, it's called Pinkwash Apartheid and Rainbow Drones, and it's on the TwinkRev website. Um, how do I find that? TwinkRev.com. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> um, see how this works, folks? See how the grift, <laughs> the grift goes? Um, the only reason I mention it is because it ties into, like, this theme of Western liberal, like, LGBT movements and kind of how the imperialist narrative um supersedes all of the like genuine concern of gay and, and like different sexual minority um groups. I don't want to say gay because like it's very different in certain countries and like sexuality and stuff like that. Um but I discuss like why we should still show solidarity and if we actually want to help people like say the Sarah's of like the world, we gotta stop with all the military intervention and stop holding people up to a standard that's just not based in like material reality. Um, and like Egypt's a great example of this. Um, Egypt's a U.S. client state. Um, it hasn't really shifted. And if it has shifted, it's been, I don't know, an Islamist group that's been like banned and like free legalized and now it's just like literally a military police state run by a, a military general. So like we need to stop supporting the countries that are allowing the further to like we're paying money to Saudi Arabia who like played a huge role in 
rising up the Muslim Brotherhood and giving them safety when they were kicked out, and then they came back, and then it was awful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, shout out to uh, C. Decky on Twitter, the friend friend of the show, who yeah. uh, kind of pointed out there's there you know there's there's a history of scholarship on this stuff around particularly um sort of uh what there's he he pointed us to the uh, Joseph Massad who's a an academic who I guess has done a lot of stuff on like queer theory and the Arab world. But he calls it sort of the gay international, mm. um, and the the sort of the fixation on things, events like Tel Aviv Pride, right, as as um, signifiers of a certain kind of progress that are not. Um, it's not. It's not. It's not necessarily like the kinds of freedoms that actually make a difference in the lives of people who have to actually say live in Gaza. Yeah. Um, it's it's very much like. You know, I live I live in a, you know, a big American or British city and I spend all my weekends going to circuit parties and um whatever else and then like there's a sort of I can I can cast my eyes as as you know, I'm a I'm an educated person. I, I show my concern for those you know, the this the Middle East and it's it's so complicated yeah. and I couldn't possibly understand. But but I see as part of a member of sort of the gay jet set white trash um <laughs> i i get to uh sort of be like oh well you know israel is doing gay rights correctly is in a way that yeah. sort of structurally and manifestly caters to my personal taste i can i can go to a circuit party in tel aviv basically it's for pride qu- it's quite an ethnocentric take on like the differences in like the culture and like history and like the systems that are at play um i mean for one like the assumed that gay liberation or like, I don't know, LGBT liberation anywhere in the world must all look the same and that everyone has the same concerns. Um, it's just kind of silly and not true. Like I don't think circuit parties or pride are the equation of like what it should look like. I mean, I think I remember watching a bunch of Eastern European videos on people and they're like, Oh, it's fine. Um, we don't really care, but like keep it private because like they're not a very publicly sexual culture. It's like a lot of places in the world are, and it's like oh, we must have gay pride parades everywhere, and everyone wants to make out and have sex in the bush. And like that's fine if you're in like I don't know Denmark or Berlin. But, like that's probably not gonna be like what people want. Even gay people want in like I don't know like Gaza or like Egypt or something. Um, and that's fine. You don't need to be that. All the same, like well, it's certainly um to to say that that's the measure of whether, um, you know, uh, a country is good or bad in the Middle East, say, and whether they are deserving of um, say, uncritical and unflinching military and financial support, or of being drone bombed, say, yeah, you know, just just to to pick two random examples of things that we might rain down from above, um, you uh. You would you would be doing a lot of heavy lifting for sort of a, a basically the project of empire. Yeah. If if you if you were sort of then adding your voice to the chorus, of people saying like, "Well, these savages just don't know how to have a gay pride parade, and therefore we should, um, you know, they are not really deserving of full status as human beings." And that's not to say that you can't show good solidarity with with local movements that are uh, pushing for certain things. Like that. And I, I really liked in in your article you did uh, call out the fact that there is there's sort of there's a changing there's changing attitudes in much of the Middle East anyway. Yeah, we're just not hearing about it. Right, and there and there are there's local rights groups, there's more and more like LGBT publications and there's sort of stuff that's all locally adapted to the the, the conditions there for the people who actually live there. Um, yeah. There's... rather than for the for the tastes of of a just international gay traveling circuit party crew, like cir- circle circuit queens. Well, I think that's a really good point is there's so many groups emerging in a lot of these places. I mean, we have like well-established, not very large, but on um, LGBT advocacy groups in Tunisia, Jordan, and Lebanon. Um, I think Iraq even has one that now. Um, I've seen more people posting. Surely like, if it's in Iraq, it's just a human rights campaign. Did we not like, just like parachute them in there? <laughs> do we not, do we not have, totally. do we not have that yet? Um, even like in Syria, I've had people show me like um, murals of like promoting or people promoting gay rights and like 
in wealthier regions in Syria for sure. But like still like to see any of that is like miraculous. What was it? Um, it was several years ago, I guess, at the height of some of the sort of ISIS conflicts. Uh, the, the, um, there's an article like, was it Harper's? It was Harper, yeah. Yeah, did, it, did a, a, a cool piece about the... Um, gay soldiers in Syria. Yeah, in, in Damascus. But I was just like, yeah. the, 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 the writer um, was chatting basically in these sort of underground gay bars in Damascus. Yeah. And pretty, like, when I say underground, I mean, they're like, they're underground and they're not advertised as gay bars, but they're known to be gay bars. And people are, you know, men dancing and making out and doing all the things you might expect in the gay bar. So the the image we have of, like, you know, Tel Tel Aviv Pride is this, like, very much would, would look like San Francisco Pride or New York Pride or fucking, you know, London Pride, right? It's sort of a big old gay party and very open. Yeah. Um, but it turns out like you don't have to cast a stone very far to find a, a bunch of really horrible shit going on. Um, yeah. Well, I, well, I think remember when we shared that we fell into the trap for like liberals is the um, third wayism of an, a false third option. Cause like an article discusses um, like gay life under Assad, um, who's not a Marxist, not like, not anyone good. like not, good. not anyone I love. Um, not good. But then the other option of like what was happening to gay people in um like Al Nusra and like Salafis so and and he was like, Yes, I would rather ha live under what I had you before because <laughs> at least we had spaces where we could at least interact and like all of that's gone. Like there used to be um a company based in Lebanon that did gay tours, like out uh, gay tours to Syria and I went to like the bathhouses, which are not the same thing as American bathhouses, oh. but like I was getting all excited. People do have like. <laughs> he just woke, Sam just woke <laughs> Siri up with his his told us talk of bathhouses. <laughs> like Sam, I have booked you a spot at all your favorite bathhouses. But they go like see the sites of like the cultural sites in Syria. They went to bathhouses. Um, they went to some like the, like spaces known for like gay and lesbian frequency, and it's like that's all interesting. Like, but it's gone now because liberals got mad that these governments weren't good enough so we had to like go in there and save them for like women's rights and gay rights we and, did it team um uh, these sites are all very complex like even israel i mentioned in the article um the complexities of lgbt rights there and it's kind of like tel aviv's to like san francisco and everywhere else is like i don't know Le less san francisco less san francisco <laughs> yeah like Jerusalem Pride's been attacked twice, all by the same guy. He's <laughs> like a Jewish extremist. He just stabs people at fucking Pride. He literally, so what happened was he went in, I think, 2013. If I get it wrong by the years, I'm sorry. But he went and stabbed three people. I think it was 2015. 2015, yeah, you're right. It was 2005 and 2015, I believe. That's what it was, yeah. Um, he stabbed three people, went to jail, um, got out like 10 years later, and right after he got out, went back to Jerusalem Pride and stabbed six people. <laughs> Just did it again. Yay, like, we did oh. it, team. Um, yeah, which is, you know, not, not to say, I mean, yes, so like, uh, sure, this, the state of Israel has uh, enshrined certain legal protections for, yeah. for gay people. But it's, it's the, the problem is to, to simply sort of be a tourist in that environment and to go just do the same sort of like insipid gay partying while there's literally an open air prison operating which is running out of water you know is under blockade persistently uh access to medical care and things is incredibly rationed they're going to annex the west bank now right yeah which is like even worse because like um the west bank has like marginally better films than well, like a little more land and did not essentially yeah. um elect hamas and therefore yeah have been, have been allowed to yeah, a little more um it's much easier to go to the West Bank than Gaza from what I've been told from people. Um, but like that's being potentially annexed and like the whole, like Tel Aviv pride especially is financed by the Israeli government. Um, and like the IDF, which really promotes their gay military brand. Um, <laughs> and it's like a group of oppressed people like Palestinians are asking you to not support these operations which contribute to their demise and you'd rather just 
you can go to any other pride. Go to Sao Paulo, go to Berlin. Like, why do you need to go to Tel Aviv? Yeah, no, I mean, if, if you're going to take no cops at pride seriously, which I think everybody should, then um, then Tel, Tel Aviv pride is is sort of, you're, you're in a, a state where the very existence of that pride is, is sort of contingent upon the just absolute militarized occupation of, um, you know, Palestinians and and. And the, the problem is the complexity is this, right? The sensitivity you can say is, yeah, there are, there's a bunch of, you know, I'm sure like lo- lovely gay Israelis who they're having a pride festival and they're, they're not, it's not loaded with connotation for them necessarily and like good on them, but it's, it's actually about what is the connotation of then being a, being a tourist in that, right? And sort of um, mm-hmm. uh, economically and, and therefore sort of politically supporting a project which is presented to the world in a very specific way to push a very specific narrative. Yeah. Um, and so... Yeah, I don't know. Um, read <laughs> Sam's article. Anyway, he's he's not just a pretty face. He he also he also writes writes uh, some hot takes, um, and it's yeah, it's good. Um, it kind of ties into the, um, it's an old article with the Jacobin queer eye article. Well, yeah, you're up. you're not the only one pushing out hot takes. Um, yeah, this is a lukewarm take. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> by um, it's Megan Day. Megan Day. Yeah, and um, she gets upset. Well, it, so so it, it resurfaced. Um, so uh, I, I can probably summarize briefly. Yeah. So um, there's a there's a format of Jacobin article, um, and it basically goes under socialism. Actually, current affairs does as well. So just call it like, generally speaking, in the socialist publishing world, there's a format of of how do I you know make my make make deadline and churn out a, a shitty hot take. Well, you write the article which is under socialism, X, and this one was one she churned out in about December of last year, which was under socialism, queer eye would be reality for everybody. Yeah. Like this, your life would look like queer eye. And like, um, <laughs> she's talking about this sort of like the caring, nurturing aspects of, of queer eye in terms of, um, in just improving the lives of, of all these, these poor people who are sort of self-aware and kind of embarrassed about their shitty existences and, and how actually, you know, the, the tastes of a group of gay men and, you know, they'll, they'll go and improve the lot of everybody. And this is good. And actually this, this tells us something about living under socialism. <laughs> and, um, it turns out you can just generate infinite takes like this. And, um, given the, the British bake off one was, I, Oh God, was the current affairs of Jacobin. That was thing. current affairs. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, sorry. That was Jacobin as well. Yeah. No, Jacobin is, has just become um, a hotbed of this kind of like, uh, making bold predictions about under socialism, <laughs> under socialism, x yeah um and you can just play mad lips with this under like you can just be like um under socialism um you know waxing won't hurt well it's utopian uh, logic it's not yeah, based it's in anything like nonsense material like it doesn't it doesn't tell us anything about the world we live in now and how we make things better for working people or like i don't know like making life nicer for the poor is, is not the same thing as socialism where it's to actually shift political economic power to workers. It's not just making their lives nicer. It's about giving them political authority over the economic system that we all have to operate in. Right. And it's so, yeah, there's, there's sort of wish thinking involved, uh, which is just bizarre, which you, I don't know under socialism, I'll have a 12 inch penis. Um, like, like, I'd like fuck off it's three the same thick thing. extensions for everyone <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, yeah it's just like the same it's the same political content as that statement which is to say um you're saying yeah you're saying nothing about the society we live in you're saying nothing about how the society we live in could be transformed or improved um and you're not even really talking about i mean like if you're just doing fucking science fiction then you can do a lot better than queer eye if you do, you're like if you're doing speculative fiction about like go write a book like, that's what like, i'm saying yeah write fiction yeah because like, this is what this is this, this genre is a is is a um this shitty shitty media product that uh we we will i think we will explore why it's shitty perhaps but um that this is telling us actually about a, you know a better future under socialism like fuck off this is this is just paternalistic bullshit in terms of telling us how how we might live yeah um and and it turns out i don't want to live in queer eye universe and no. but thankfully there's no reason to believe we will because it, it turns out there's there's sort of no like theory of change 
that would lead us to that world. I don't, I don't want my social betters coming in and fixing my crappy life. Yeah. I want my crappy life to not be crappy anymore, but I want my life. The whole Queer Eye project is the one to say, you get a new life. Well, conveniently also occurred, um, I know self-promotion, right? Um, my article, The Unfabulous Truth About Queer Eye, also came out. Yeah. Um, which actually came out this time. It wasn't like an old article. Um, <laughs> and yeah. I have a much different take, which Jan helped me a lot with too. So it's like kind of a co-article. Um, well, I'm, I'm on the byline, but yeah. mostly for the sass. Yeah, Gian's the sass. Yeah, I, I just, I just, uh, yeah. Sam, Sam wrote a wrote, wrote a, a serious article, <laughs> um, laying out a case against sort of queer eye being, or or or, or the, the queer eye sort of had some questionable class politics underpinning it, and then I turned I turned into a shit post. So if you don't like that that part of it, that's me. I'm sorry. I'm I've been brainwashed into writing in a certain way from my old op ed writing days. So I'm slowly <laughs> learning to rewrite. Um, um, learn to ship post. Yeah, I'm good at ship posting when it's not like a lawn thing. I do it really good in the beginning, and then I kind of just, like stop, and then I get very serious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, oh, bitch, and it's uh, like, let me actually her. tell you why the real world's really awful. <laughs> yeah, actually, Sam, Sam's Sam's a uh, uh, pink washed apartheid and rainbow drones has the rather sublime subtitle, which is um, a love story between Western liberal gays and Tel Aviv pride. Yeah. That was me. Yeah, that was, no, that was all you know. I'm saying. No, I was saying uh, that was a compliment, Sam. You no, take know. the compliment. Yeah, I know. Fuck um, you. Yeah, never mind. I'm never complimenting <laughs> you on your subtitles ever again. Um, but unlike the Jacobin shit piece, I actually did a class analysis of who the Fab Five are and who are they helping and like what are the goals and are they actually doing the goals and it kind of ties down to a theme we've been talking about a lot as well. Like out there lefty tuber podcast people of the pmc project to not um proletarianize the masses but instead right. to like eradicate them and make them fellow pmcs right it's it's, a, it's a, a, like what you are hearing manifest is the, the real-time panic in the voices of your sort of media class who um want to live in a utopian socialist world because it would mean they didn't have to contend for for their position anymore yeah because because every everybody gets to be a buzzfeed or vox writer or <laughs> everyone gets to like be upper upper middle management at at a fucking jet ski dealership we all get to be an uber driver <laughs> <laughs> well but i mean that that's the problem is that they're they're very sort of happy with that as long as you're you're a striving entrepreneur mm-hmm. um and so yeah, I mean, I thought the the point the point that the the article makes is um, that there's there's a class there's a class project being manifest, and Sam actually did did the work of um, combing through the fucking episodes. It was like thirty two episodes, and yeah. I went through like all of the intros to for figure out who they were helping, and I broke it down into like who's working class and who's like unemployed and who's a boss and who's like a pmc and some and cop cops and prison guards yeah. as well in there turns out like 50 percent were um professional managerial class and only like 25 percent were workers we're sort of identifiably like in in like classic working class positions yeah yeah it's like I, bartenders and like um some teachers and nurses teachers, or yeah. whatever which you know uh there's some argument are they professionals but call, call it at least like there's there's a there's a pretty big difference um where they're they're helping these like sort of I'm a media executive I run an NGO <laughs> I'm a you know tech workers like or programmers or whatever like all this sort of yeah it's a sort of so once you sort of start taking it from that frame you say what are they trying to turn these people into yeah um and and these you know the lo- the lovable Fab Five they are all of themselves I mean just like scions of media families or sort of long time media personalities. They corporation have, like it's corporate whores i mean they, they all have businesses well, they I mean, have like brands they they have fucking they'll they'll co-brand like merchandise and shit they're just like oh they're making so much money yeah, yeah they're they're all air like se- several of them are sort of heirs to substantial named fortunes and shit like that i mean these yeah. people are not like like tan, they're not your friends tan france the fashion guy retired at the age of 33 and they're Michael selling Cross, his like, companies basically he's like yeah. sold a bunch of fashion brands he had owned but his grandparents own a denim factory in britain 
Um, just and that's where he learned wow, to like, like sew. So it's like, oh, he really had a rough life, you know, from yeah. like a lawn Lenny or like Jonathan Van Ness is a great example. Like he often touts his family. It's like, oh, just a bunch of journalists, like nothing big. And his family's owned like a media conglomerate since like the 1890s. Um, oh, was that that long? Yes. Wow. Um, and it's like, that's not just a bunch of journalists. These are like massive people who control large sections. Wait, is, is he a Van Ness of, of like Van Ness like street, like of, of US history? I don't know. I don't like I wouldn't part. be surprised if he is actually. I, I've, no, yeah. no, I, I, I have no idea. Sorry. Yeah. You know, in in the game universe, sorry, I'm just speculating wildly to say that. Um, I mean, there there is there is a there's a there's a political family that is Van Ness's that, that could be. <laughs> also, like, um, what's his name? Who's the culture and lifestyle one? Um, I don't remember his name. If you can remember it, um, but he was on MTV. Oh, I don't give a shit about it. Anyway. Yeah, it was in um, the real world. Like, and he's like the lifestyle guy. And I'm like, the last person I'd ever want lifestyle advice from is someone whose career is based on numerous reality TV shows and had like a child they didn't know for 10 years and stuff. I'm like, that's not the person I'd want. Like, <laughs> um, now the show's like a, a show about class war. Um, in a way that's like, oh, it's so fun. The gays are helping the straights look pretty and do their skin. And it's actually like, no, we're, we're actually saving mostly our own people to make them suitable to our taste. Um, but we're going to say they're in like poor or like problematic areas like the South or the Midwest. And it's like, I don't know. I've, I've watched the first two seasons. And then I guess as I've grown in my like, thought process and stuff i noticed it something that just made me very uncomfortable and i couldn't place what it was and i finally realized what it was and i wrote it and i was <laughs> like yeah um, um yeah we, we will not we will not exclusively just plug online articles but no. we're we're excited about this shit because usually what you get us are sort of like hot takes um that we're just sort of generating endlessly and uh now we sit down and write write <laughs> stuff and like so that means this is what we've been thinking about which is kind of fun <laughs> Yeah, but kind of jumping off that point of plugging our own shit, which we won't make a regular thing. Um, a topic that no, I never stop grifting. A I topic think. I've been familiar with as like a vegan for like a decade now. How do you know if there's a vegan on your podcast? <laughs> They'll tell you. Um, <laughs> but is um, it reemerged recently in the online world is um, the secret like vegan, primarily like health veganism and right-wing politics so i there's this youtuber who was really big in like the early 2000s her name is freely um she was like known as like freely the banana girl um she's from australia what a, what a name and her whole usually, mon- usually takes quite a bit of work to get that kind of reputation with the boys <laughs> <laughs> um but um she's known as like a raw vegan or like a high carb like vegan who's like explicitly anti like cooked foods and like um protein and fat and things you can just have like a mostly carb fruit based diet and that's healthy and there's a, she's like she's a, she's an online bully she's like extremely mean to people and she claims to do it for animals but she recently shared her response to the candace owens video on george floyd and Oh, is this? Sorry, I I didn't connect the dots on this because I saw that video. Yeah, so but she supports it because she, like many health based and just regular vegans, thinks the media's lying to us um, to divide us. Which I think that's not a fully wrong point of like media using using divisive politics, but more in like a conspiratorial kind of set of like, oh, they're not telling you about this person and like wait sorry sorry ba- back up what yeah. was the the candace owens she george floyd video? did a video about george floyd and how she thinks people are martyring him and how because he i don't know that's like i think drug convictions and stuff that we shouldn't martyr him because he's a bad person still um i mean, and I, I mean just uh like basically like oh he's not a good 
representative of like our community, like the black community. So doing identity politics, but uh, from, yes. like a Can- right wing. Candace Owens, that person who's fam- famously fond of identity politics when it allows her to be a shitty person. Yeah. Um, but that's her whole thing. It's like how he's actually a bad person and we shouldn't like have him on t shirts and stuff. Ah. But, like, well, thank, good- thank like, goodness I had learned her opinion on it. She'll quietly be like, oh, but I don't think what should happen to him did and it's like well you kind of do because you don't want to change any of the economic <laughs> systems that made this happen like yeah it's um <laughs> Candace owens is fine with the police murdering people as long as you only get mad about it if the people they murder are um good and perfect people yeah great we've done we've done it and there's some other clips of like um other conservative black figures who have had rising careers like once like a rising up like black gay conservative i, I don't oh. remember his name um sounds lovely but like their whole careers are just like attacking identity politics with the use of like their own version of identity politics <laughs> well conservatism i mean is is yeah pretty pretty fond of these yeah ontological categories they just uh don't agree with the conclusions you reach using them yeah but i've recognized this growing trend of for one, this YouTuber has hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It's banana Girl. Like, Banana Girl, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, it's not... I'm never going to stop saying that. I'm going to become a fan just so I can use... Freely banana, the Banana Girl. Banana Girl in, in a sentence. I think her, her catchphrase is, carb the fuck up. Mm. Yeah, she... Doesn't, she had that, a sl- that, that has, that has a, um, sort of shades of, like, Pod Save America, where it's, like, that's not a phrase people use. Yeah. You see... I'm going to give you some other examples of this trend and then we can discuss like why we think. Sure. Yeah. So this, so this is so, yeah. So just to be clear, these are, this is, the, there's different a, people, a weird secret, secret alliance, um, between, between the sort of this weird kind of like kooky veganism. Yes. And, and a kind of an uncomfortable right wing. Yeah. All right. Um, that's sexy. I so there's wait. Foley raw Christina who has, I think, <laughs> I think wait, wait, sorry. We've gone from banana girl to, Fully raw, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's her account name. Okay. Um, she's based in Texas. I didn't realize this episode was sponsored by Pornhub. But she has go. a million subscribers on YouTube. I bet she does. Yeah. And she is a raw vegan who claims it cured her hypoglycemia. She likes it raw. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, she's also a, she's very into like her virgin politics. She's like a very a good Christian girl. Oh. Um, she's she's Lebanese and Ecuadorian, and she reminds mm. you all the time. Um, <laughs> um, she had a kind of a blackface scandal where she didn't realize she was doing blackface and then apologized by saying she was Lebanese and Ecuadorian a bunch. Oh, um, but nice. she's brought on this YouTuber friend twice and he does videos about the Holocaust not being real. <laughs> and she's also promoted supplements. I think it was a B12 supplement from Alex Jones. Oh, that's um, cool. This girl. So she has cool friends. I mean, we have we have some some kooky friends. Like, uh, you know, who can who can? Uh, I don't have any Nazi or like Holocaust denial. <laughs> no, no. But it's, also, it's like things like oh, like big pharma is actually killing us, and all these things. Um, and then the last one is my libertarian days. I came across this more wait like very conspiratorial and like anarcho capitalist YouTuber. It's I forget his name, but it's the account's called the Anarchast. <laughs> and he holds this like giant anarchist, like anarcho capitalist conference in Acapulco, Mexico called Anarchapoco because he thinks it's one of the most free cities because there's like no police and stuff like that. Um, At least anarch- anarchist passes my test of being like a meaningful pun that scans. I mean, I, an anarchist is a real thing or that's a phrase people will use and therefore anarchist is funny. Yeah. Um, carb the fuck up. Awful. Well, it's a, that's not our account. It's our, like, no, I know it's phrase. a catchphrase. I was saying awful. Yeah. Just doesn't doesn't pass the test. We'll do it in an Aussie like, accent. Cob, I don't know. Cab, like, cab the fuck up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it just doesn't. But it would have to be like harden the fuck up is, yeah. is a phrase. But, but carb he, the fuck up. He recently, make any sense. a few years ago, he got really into like oh, um, knowing the truth about health and like health to get rid of all like the heavy metals from vaccines and like the fluoride in water and all this shit. And he's a raw vegan as well, or like mostly raw vegan and not promotes it and just all this. But also like it's a lot of guests on who promote like very like anti Semitic narratives around like Jewish people and like Oh, uh, so it's like um, why 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 we eat 
triple parentheses cooked food. Is that sort of no, the general not, angle? No, it's not for the food, but like other things like, oh, like... Big Pharma, triple parentheses? Yeah, like okay, shit like gotcha. that. Um, so it's so it's that this is being done to us by a, a small shady cabal. Yes. Okay. And like free markets and freedom will just... It's actually what they're trying to prevent. That's why we have all this food and pharmaceuticals to prevent us from being like having our minds opened. It's very like hippy dippy, like <laughs> um, side guys kind of like mindset shit. Sounds amazing. But like, there's also like actual. This is just our recommendations section, right? <laughs> of, like stuff to go, yeah, go listen to and watch. But there's also online like Nazis who are vegan because it ties, sure. and it's like I don't even re- realize this and. Well, he, veganism is given as like a oh left wing group, right? Yeah, no, they're they're sort of regarded as your your histrionic blue haired, um, sort of left liberal social justice warriors, right? Who are mm. also very concerned about animals. But you certainly like um, it is uncomfortable to 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 learn how many times people will start talking about the Holocaust in the context of veganism because they're like, well, six million Jews, but do you know how many chickens are gassed to death every week? Like it's like yeah, the PETA thing. Yikes. Yikes, fam. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, PETA exists in the mainstream or whatever, but like um I, I don't know, I, I, I'm I'm sure you have some reflections on why this is, but I, I I've always sort of um noticed that that the um any of these sort of woo woo kind of like you will live forever if you just do the right things yeah movements right and and uh, you know health veganism right to, yes. to distinct from like say ethical ethical veganism as a i don't eat animals because i think that's wrong and bad to mm-hmm. treat them this way and yada 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 right sure whatever um uh, separate from health veganism which is i don't eat animals or i don't eat i don't eat you know uh, meat meat products and animal products because i believe that there's a secret combination of of perfect acts I can perform that shall lead me to perfect health and eternal life. Yeah. And that sort of radical self perfection, certainly you sort of you start to understand that like that there's a correct way to behave that renders you as as sort of perfect and uh pure and um, you know, therefore not deserving of of the, the punishment of the universe with yeah. affliction and disease or whatever, right? Well I think so much of it ties into um their narratives of like we have the cure like we have the thing that will like they always claim like oh my raw vegan or like vegan Mm -hmm. diet will cure your cancer and it'll cure your diabetes and it'll cure your heart disease and it'll make your hair grow back and it'll make you stronger and like healthier and you'll live so much longer and you're also doing moral good it's always about like you as an individual doing the right things like i think this is what the point in the first one freely can so it's like you got to take responsibility. It's about you. Like you, know, you got to do this. Yeah. Why aren't you fucking helping the animals? Like she, she swears a lot. She's like, a, I mean, she's an Aussie, wow, but like she does, does uh, swears. Yeah. She's sort of so transgressive. Well, that's the difference. Um, the free league chick is like extremely like rough and like, she's very much like an Aussie hard ass. Right, Aussie, like, Aussie, little Aussie battler. Yeah. And then, um, the other two are merged. Banana like, girl. No, banana girl's the first one. Oh, um, that's sorry. I'm just still obsessed. <laughs> oh, raw, um, raw, f- raw dog and raw dog and Christine. Yeah, bare bareback Christine. Um, um, but she's more like the. We just gotta love each other and connect and build community. Yeah, bet, and bet like, she would say that, wouldn't she? Um, no barri- no barriers to love. Uh, <laughs> says raw Christine. Yeah. Um, Fuck me. But I think another point of like the mantra is so much of it is like reconnecting to like the earth and land and i think they can kind of take on like a blood and soil (laughs) mantra it's like a oh like we're like like vegan like like certain right-wing groups like white supremacists and nazis have taken on veganism or like animal welfare animal rights as a way to promote like for one superiority of like these animals over people like the Nazis did like, Oh, dogs and horses have more rights than Jewish people in our country. Like they right. shut down all of the animal testing facilities and use Jewish people. Like, um, it wasn't because like they were, yeah, all- we wouldn't want to harm anybody important. Yeah, they, they also like practice on hunting. Um, not, not saying any of these things are like just bad or good. Like I think a lot of the policies are probably good for the animals, but like, there's a deeper political reason behind a lot of this. <laughs> yes, it's rather rather stark when you start um, yeah. y- using the, those comparisons. But also it's like the purity thing of like, oh, we're clean and we've cleaned our bodies of like the, the um, um, 
milk and honey of the world and actually raw veganism has a deep origin and um christian like cleansing it's like in uh and so it's sort of washing the, the the metaphorical washing the feet, but it's the washing of the bowels. Return to the Garden of Eden, kind of right, sense. right. Because the yeah, the idea being that the the garden, the garden, you know, nature provides all, and um, yeah, it's kind of kind of a sc- scary, scary, deep and narrative. Um, and it the you know, I think what's interesting is it expresses the sort of revulsion from modernity. That is, um, that is the thing within fascist ideology. That people who are crazy Nazi online Nazi hunters pull out of parts of the left, yeah. Because the thing is, you know, I I think I have I have a certain revulsion from modernity, <laughs> not because I'm a fash. Um, yeah, I'm a fash for separate reasons. <laughs> no, I'm, um, but but I mean, the, you know, there there is. It is easy to sort of look at at the world we have built around ourselves and how alienating it is, and to be kind of horrified and repulsed by so much of it. Um, but I fucking love antibiotics and shit. Like, and I like, turns out, turns out I like hot showers and stuff. So like, it's not all bad, but, but that, um, you know, it, it is a key, I know they say this cause, um, I was in a conversation earlier about, about, um, Umberto Eco, the sort of famous semiotician and novelist, um, uh, wrote this thing called, um, Ur fascism, a book, sort of text about, about the, the properties of fascism. And one of those things is a sort of, yeah, sort of um, a revulsion or aversion to modernity is, mm-hmm. is one of his sort of things he demarcates saying what defines fascism. Yeah. Um, and so to simply, yeah, to have this sort of return to return to innocence um, narrative and return to purity, it's like our pure yeah. state, we are we are sort of fallen. You can see where some of the um, sort of the, the, the fashy bits of Christianity bleed over into the sort of body, like almost a kind of body horror, right? Yeah. Like your body is gross and icky, and 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 will will become riddled with disease unless you do the the correct things. I think another huge aspect of this, um, which is a health veganism thing, is this kind of deep mistrust of institutions and the idea of like, oh, the whole. Every every organization has been telling me what the wrong things, and have actually been eating the wrong foods because all these people are connected. And then you start mistrusting everything else. Like, oh, a lot of them become flat earthers, Holocaust <laughs> deniers, um, climate change isn't real. Um, all of these things because they base their entire world perception in like every perf- every expert telling me the wrong info according to my secret knowledge, and. Yep. Why would anything else be different? The media is lying to us. The pharmaceuticals. Um, I don't know the government, yeah, food, food industry, the big, food industry, big, big ag. Like um, it's yeah. like, which is kind of like that. I mean, to some extent, it's true. Yeah, but not in no way. N- not in that way. Think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, and, and that's that's sort of interesting to to think about, right? Is that um, the the inherent mistrust that one can feel if you if you if you sort of look around the world and start being like, wait a minute, like what is, what is sort of being shoveled down our throats to be suspicious of that is, is a good impulse. The problem is if what the left is offering you is very pat answers that are not satisfying. Yeah. Um, you just didn't vote hard enough for Hillary Clinton or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I use left in, in appropriate scare quotes there. Right. I mean, if, if liberalism is giving you answers that are, effectively to say you know you just you just didn't want it bad enough mm-hmm. then the idea that something is being kept from you and hidden from you is uh is becomes very appealing and i you know you can see how people go in these rabbit holes youtube will recommend you a lot of a lot of uh extreme content to to validate that hypothesis and lo and behold you can you know c- quickly you're like six million i don't know that sounds like a pretty large number i can't count that high <laughs> and if you can't count that high, then how could that be? Ooh, ooh. You know, and yeah, you're, you're straight into a, a community, which is then also incredibly welcoming. Yeah. Um, you know, take 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 a sort of insular community like raw veganism already, and then throw in a bit of social pressure to um, to just be skeptical about, you know, some of these triple parentheses pharma companies and see how you yeah end up in some really fucking scary dark places. Well, I love seeing all the people. Cause I, used, I used to like 
really buy into a lot of this shit back in the day. Um, not the not the not the anti-Semitism. No, I see. I see the, like, the raw veganism. The raw part. veganism, like or like. <laughs> Just want to clarify. People like, have certain <laughs> ideas about us. No, this is the veganism. Like cure all your cancer and like this stuff. Like, um, and I remember watching like because there were so many of these YouTubers who go on like, oh, my fruit diet is like helping me lose weight and my skin cleared and like everyone wants to like feel amazing and that sounds perfect and like oh there's this um there's a there was a big festival called the woodstock fruit festival that he would all go to <laughs> and they would just like spend a week and it was very expensive um but they would just go and eat endless a like, bunch bunch of fucking fruits hanging out <laughs> no pride's canceled this year sam well they would just eat like endless like fruits and vegetables like raw like in like this campground and it seemed like idyllic and perfect God, and porta potties were just destroyed and then you start getting reports <laughs> like oh people got sick because they like took the thrown out i don't know um coconuts from the dumpster and like served that to people or, like they ran out of food one year <laughs> and you can't have cooked food allowed at the thing and it's like um the emergence of like oh there's actual like cult leaderships and like um there was a girl who almost died from a water fast in Mexico conducted by this leader, Oof. like 30 days, 30 day water fast. And they, oh, don't and do like that. Food's she good. almost died. She had to go to like the hospital almost like on life support. Um, and it's like, these people didn't leave because of that. They didn't shame it or anything. Like a lot of people ended up just becoming like carnivore diets or, um, well, onto the next fad diet, right? I mean the next, yeah. the next, um, radical self-improvement you can make to, to purge yourself of the, the, the un, unclean yeah you know base human nature yeah or like they just like went to like a clean diet or like a lot of them are getting to like the like intuitive eating shit now which is also Whatever, like weird right? i mean it's all um, it's all just like it's all some it, it's still the idea that there there's a magic formula yeah to health and if you if you crack it and it's you know the more kind of miserable it is the more, the more you know, it's it's the correct one, right? Yeah, like actually, they also comment a lot on like body image and like, oh, you're not pure enough. Like the fully crock Christina chick, like really early on, because she was hypoglycemic, was skinnier than me. Like imagine that, and she gained a bunch of weight and looks quite healthy. Like has like good body fat percentage and stuff. Like I think she looks fine. Um, um, I assume her, I mean, her OnlyFans subscribers were giving her feedback. <laughs> but on. people commented and I'm like, oh, she's gained a bunch of weight because she's like changed her diet and has more fats. And I think she's at her ideal weight when she looked like a skeleton. Mm. And it's like, there's something going on. And it's like, this is why I got rid of um, health-based veganism because I just found it very toxic and, I don't know, problematic. And no, it's non-toxic, Sam. That's the whole idea. <laughs> um, you're, not, you're not putting those horrible toxins in your body and you can um, avoid the 5G signals that'll turn you into a gay Antifa or whatever. Yeah, but it's just like a very interesting trend that people don't know about. And Yeah, no, and that, that is, this is a quirky folk history. We're yeah. changing the name of the pod to Twinkanon. Um, <laughs> um, well, that's, that's fascinating. Uh, so anyway, remember to eat meat to avoid becoming a fascist, everybody. Uh, that's what I've seen that about. actually before. <laughs> Someone once posted that you should be eating meat because being vegan is fascism. That's also extremely stupid, as we've talked about. That's gonna be my defense. The next next time, like the the weird crypto fash hunters come for us because we do Marxism <laughs> online, I'm gonna be like, no, no, it's okay. I can prove I'm not a fascist. Here's me eating a hamburger. Why well, I, I tried and to you're <laughs> shit out of luck. Sorry, buddy. I tried to eat lab grown ice cream and then I just like spent five hours at night just like vomiting and it was the worst thing. Yeah, Sam can't eat lab grown milk, apparently. Whoops. Well I'm lactose intolerant and I thought because there was no lactose in it and it's lab grown, that's it's fine. Like I don't care. There's no moral qualms. <laughs> and then I'm just like, oh, I don't feel good at like one in the morning and just spend like the whole night just destroying my body. Yeah. And let's just say I'm not going back to get second. <laughs> I really enjoyed the. I it was really good. I liked it. I'm yeah, still it sad. Yeah. No, I, I I thought it was great. But um, I'm just too pure with the. It's poisons. your fascism. It's <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, it was it was um, the uh, the the animal animal proteins conflicting with your natural innate fascism. Well, wasn't like the milk um, image like a term for like white supremacy for a bit? Yeah, I believe so. Well, it turns out then I'm like, oh, I don't eat dairy, so I clearly can't be a oh, white supremacist. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Damn, it works both ways. Sort of this veganism thing. <laughs> um, God's, God's, <laughs> well, that's our episode. Yeah, guys. thanks, thanks, guys. I think we I think we've done enough for the the good works here today. Um, right. Remember, check out the Patreon. 
Yeah. Um, Patreon.com slash TwinkRev. Just we haven't groveled for money recently. And check out TwinkRev.com. Bye, guys. Bye.